Okay, so I guess it's that time. Let's get, let's get so we're trying something um, different today. Uh, since we have um, the people doing this webinar are so follically gifted, i.e., oh, have great hair, and my hair looks great. Yours does I too. actually, I actually, yeah, yeah, love your hair. Yes, exactly. I got up this morning and I said, you know what? Next year at this time, I'm going to have less gray hair. I think you might yeah. have actually achieved that. That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the webcam going yeah. while we do the presentation. So you in Go Meeting, you can control Go Webinar. You can control the size of yeah, it. Yeah, you just by right, dragging the thing up and down. Or if you really want, you can just close it. Like if it's really painful to uh, to look at the lights glaring off my five head, yeah, you can just close it. Yeah. No, I don't. So, I, yeah. I, that's, that's yeah. good. So anyway, so shall we get started? So we're going to talk this morning about uh, deep diving into SME Server 2014. And uh, so, so thanks um, for, for tuning in. We're really excited about this release. It's the best um, FME Server release ever. Absolutely. And we're just going to go over a few things. So let's get started. Okay. So here we go. This is a deep dive. So our graphics department's been pretty busy working on those snorkels. Um, we can't go very deep with those snorkels is the first thing I'll say. The water's going to come in pretty quick. I, I, honestly, I was, I was going over this last night. I thought it's more like a, a shallow with, with those. Yes, but. that's right. We're sort of like when you do it in Hawaii. You skim the surface, and then you can see the turtles. Exactly. Yeah, so there we go. So and there's our Twitter accounts. Uh, yep. so feel free to follow us, and, and we're going to have some fun this morning. Okay. So, you know, the agenda, really, um, introduction to Safe Dives. We're going to blow, blow through, through that, that really quickly. Um, we have some uh, web uh, poll questions, highlights and demos, and then some Q&A. So here we go. So we also, online, we have uh, people with good hair helping us. Oh, wow, that's yeah, fantastic Yeah, yeah hair, like Stuart, um, it's kind of a hair flaunter. And then what can you say about Laura's hair other than it's just great Magnus. hair? It's just great hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, We're going to hear more from them later, too. Absolutely. So as you have questions, please type them in, and we will answer them as we go. And at the end, um, time permitted, we will also... Um, we will also uh, look look at that as well. So okay, Absolutely. great. So there's our lizard friend, and um, a little bit about safe software. Um, you know what do we do? Why we do it? All that good kind of stuff. Okay, so um, we're about 100 people. About 100 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Partners all over the world. That's right. We're located. We say Vancouver, but really we're in a suburb of Vancouver called Surrey, BC, and best um, curry in the Lower Mainland. That's right. Best curry in the Lower Mainland. Very good, and um, that's just a picture at one of our um, world tour events. So, so if you get a chance to uh, do, we're going to do that again yeah. in April. Uh, I think it's is it April? I think it's April. Yeah. Anyway, look on our website. I yeah. think it's April. It's, it's going through <coughs> months and months. That's right. Maybe it starts all over the world. Yeah, all over the yeah. world. So, and then we have our world a uh, world conference in Vancouver this year in June. Okay. So first, we're going to start with a poll. Let's get that going. So the poll question is: What version of FME server are you using? So um, anyway, the questions should be think, coming in now, and and um, I think that uh, I bet you a lot do not use FME Server. Because, you think so? Yeah, because I think it, because we're seeing a tremendous growth in that, where more and more people are are moving over. Okay. So, um, just, so just, I'm just log in to see I'm, what's getting, going on. I'm guessing, but I'm not going to look at your screen until okay. until the very end. I, I looked at it. I can look at this screen because this screen doesn't show the poll. So so how are we doing? Have um, think it's I time think, to close? I think I think we're, we're okay. it's time to close. That okay. Poll. So yeah. let's close that poll. Let's close that poll and share, share the, the results. results. Look at that. And forty three percent do not use FME Server. Wow. So that's so welcome to what is FME Server, and yeah, we're going to be yeah. talking. Yeah, and then we're going to talk about all the great things you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and I like that. Nine percent are already used in 2014. That's that's, that's a big number. That's a big number for yeah. enterprise software to move so quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, so if you're new to FME, um, you know, get your bear and you want to learn a little bit more, then you can go to FME Getting Started. And um, also, we have some weekly uh, intro videos. Every week, they go through desktop, yeah. cloud, and server. That's right. That's right. That's right. And also, if you go to uh, SME, you go to the community, you can watch yeah, lots of absolutely. different things there. So lots of resources. Good. Yeah. So what do we do? Well, if you go to our website, it says connect, transform, and automate. And mm -hmm. I think those really hit it. Um, we work with many different systems, and you want to move data from one to another. So what's the first thing you need to do to the two endpoints is you have to connect to them. Yeah. And um, in the past, we've talked about formats. But more and more, the term formats doesn't doesn't work as well. So even if you when you think about connect, if you have you use Autodesk or traditional things, you connect to the Autodesk file, move the file across, move it to shape. But when you think of the web, now you really do think of connect. You don't think of um, format so much. So you might yeah. be with an ArcGIS Online, 
<clears throat> in, a, in a file and you might want to connect to RTS online to load data into it, connect to RTS online to, you know, to extract some data, things like that, Google Maps Engine. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And it works yeah. with databases. Of course, databases, we've always connected to them. We've never asked people for a, a database file or dump. Yes. So then we could... Uh, you could do it. We always want to make it as smooth as possible. Yeah, and, and the transformation part, what's that about? It's really about uh, make, taking your data model, which uh, it works fine for one application, mm -hmm. and making it so that it works fine with another application. Yeah, yeah exactly. Creating, I like the tagline on the bottom, create harmony between data and application. That's right, because it's not just enough to connect the two systems together. You have to, you have to change the data so that the consuming system can just use it. That's right. And automation, well. It really is all about automation. Let's get into this yeah, thing. I'm excited yeah, here. Yeah, and um, with FME Server, FME Server's middle name is Automate. Did it you is. you know it, that? FME Automate Server. It really is. Yeah, that's, yeah. so that's, we're going to talk a lot about uh, about automation. And you can see the, the offerings there. Desktop is where it all starts. Yeah. And you just get it working on desktop, and then you can decide maybe you just want to leave it running on desktop, mm -hmm. or you can push it to server, and FME Cloud is just FME Server in the cloud. It is. Right. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh, the slides aren't actually advancing there, just to let you know. It's Stuart here. I thought I would... Uh, okay. Well, thanks for that, Stuart. That's well. really... So I will reconnect. Obviously, something went wrong with GoToWebinar on my machine. Okay. We're having technical difficulties, but but uh, Don is on it here. Okay, we're okay, kind of we're, we're kind of back. So let's see. That's strange. Okay, we'll 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 do that again if we have to. Yeah. Fortunately, you, we just talked about this one slide. Thanks for that, Stuart. So we okay. apologize. That was good. Thank you. Anytime. All right. I'm glad he didn't wait till the very end to, uh, yeah. to tell us. That would have been a better. That's kind of like when you have something, you know, in your teeth or something. They tell yeah, you. Yeah, and then you go home. So and then yeah, you, and then, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. okay. So FME Server, I mean, this is really FME Server or FME Cloud mm -hmm. yeah. um, connecting all these things to each other yeah. or even on-premise to on-premise. If you're FME Server, you can have it inside. Or if, if you're connecting the you know cloud-based stuff to on-premise, then you have a choice whether you want to run it on-premise or the cloud. But, yeah. but yeah. more and more, we're seeing this trend to people using things in in the web, on the cloud, in the cloud, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, Dave Campanis really, he's a guy who works with us, uh, really smart, he, uh, worked here for quite a while. He says, it's glue for, for different applications. Absolutely. You can. That. Yeah, that's right. That. That's we should right. put that on our website. That's right. Okay. Connect this type of glue. Yeah, that's right. So, um, okay, well, time for another poll. Which will you use FME Server in the cloud, FME Cloud? That's, That's right. what we want to know. That poll is open. That's right. And here we go. Yeah, so if, you, so if you're interested in cloud technology or you see your organization uh, moving to the cloud, then, then uh, you're probably going to, it's just a natural fit, really. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've done the, the FME, annual, FME Server annual survey for about three yeah. years running. And, yeah. and you yeah. see, uh, before, about... 50% were not even considering it. Now, three years later, 50% are already using cloud services. Yeah, so it's yeah. a big switch in three years. That's right. Just that's with right, our customer that's base. Right, that's right. Well, some of the concerns organizations have is their data in the cloud. Yes. You know, and how is to manage this. Is it secure? And yeah. Things like that. Yeah. So as we, you know, we work through that and people understand that, it should. Uh, okay, so let's close that poll and let's see. Look at that. 63% have no plans to try FME Cloud. Okay. That will change, I think. I think it will over time. But yeah, that still but leaves a... a oh, so 6% are using that. it. I'm going to sign up immediately. Okay, good. good. Excellent. Okay. So let's close that poll and... And back to... And let's see if this advances. Ah, it's after the poll. So, Don, maybe you can do your screen sharing trick yes. there. Where you... Can you close the... Oh, did you share the results? I did. I shared... Uh, oh, yeah, you did. You did. Okay. I believe I did. Wow, that is really what annoying. Did I? Well, That's yeah. really annoying. Okay. We're having fun this morning. Okay. Sort of. There we go. Okay, now we're, we're back. back. In action. Okay, so this what is, is FME. This all about? So this is just about FME Cloud, and this talks about um, you know FME Server. So at this point, I'll just go there very, very quickly. Mm, yeah. Okay, because I have a. Uh, if I go here, 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 here. Okay, then I have FME Server in the cloud here. And um, this is just the website, and um, you can walk through it, of course. You can look at the pricing. And you'll see that you can start for a dollar an hour, and you can start and stop them however you want. Um, the data costs are down here, and it's twenty cents per gigabyte per month, and Pretty that's that's just gone down by a third. So has it really? just, yeah, I as Amazon know. lowers its prices, we pass the, the cost savings okay. right on to the. So client. you haven't hard coded the no. cost. You just no. Okay. So they lowered their price, and so uh, we lowered ours. It used to be thirty cents per gigabyte per month. Wow. So nice. so we're excited about that. 
you know, if there's one thing Amazon does is constantly reduce the prices, so we're excited about that. So you can see that how, you know, you can get started for a dollar an hour. Yeah. So, if, you know, good for prototyping, things like that. Yeah. Um, we can go and look at, um, I have one running here, so we can go to my dashboard. Once things are there, you can, you can take a look at, you know, how much, um, whoops, you can take a look at how much uh, memory it's using, current disk usage, things like that. You know, I could also... Um, so it's a nice wrapper yeah, around FME server, that's actually. Right. I could pause it, and yeah. then I wouldn't be paying the dollar an hour, oh, but okay. it would, then I could just restart what it. What if I want to get started? I don't want to pay any money. Ah, there's a $250 credit. So okay, if you think a dollar an hour, then that's going to be, you know, that's quite that's a bit. Yeah, yeah, so you can sign up. You sign up, and then you're going to get a $250 uh, credit for that. Excellent. So that's the way the way you go. It talks about that right there. So it really it really is a fantastic new way to get started. It really that. is. It you really don't have is. to install yeah. you don't have to acquire hardware. You don't have to worry about um, punching a hole through your corporate firewall. None of that. None of yeah. that kind of stuff. So good yeah. pl good playground, good way to get started. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people so, use it for prototyping and then and then go on premise. Yeah and and with FME twenty fourteen we've made it really easy. We'll talk about migration. Oh I think yeah. right about now. Yeah look at this. So um now you know what we're really working towards is making FME server migrating from one release to the next or between you know just yeah. from one machine to the next as easy as it is mm -hmm. when you get a Mac so we yes. so that means it's got to be click 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 so for FME 2014 um, if you if you let's say you have one FME 2014 running you want to move to another one you would literally first just click the migration button yeah okay that's the one click that's the one click then you click the start backup button and right. then you'd have a backup that's on two that's two then you go to your other machine Click migration again. That's the third one. That's the third click, and then you go. You would have to select the backup file, and then there's the fourth click, and away you're That's going. It. Yeah, and if you're running FME 2013, it's really easy as well. You would simply go to mm -hmm. log on to the machine, go to the, you know the, the, under the repository. There's a you, there's a job that's called a utility called run backup. Run or, backup, something like that. Something like that. You'd run that. Gives you a file. Copy it over onto your FME 2014. Yep. Yeah. Run the workspace to load it back up, and that's all there is to it. That's it. Yeah. So no more manually republishing things and setting no, topics no, up and, and it all sets that every, stuff. No, no, it sets up all the users, yeah. sets up everything. Yeah. So we don't want you yeah. to have to mess with things as you go from version to version. Or, that's right. Or that's right. So, so this just talks about um, exactly. you know, on-premise to on-premise, on-premise to cloud, cloud to cloud, cloud to premise, whatever you want to what, do. Whatever yeah. you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So what about this Windows authentication? Well, you know why people are logging into machines more and more without knowing their password. They're using hardware dongles or they're using right. their fingerprints or something. Yeah. So yeah. then they come to an FME server web interface. A couple of years back, we had even last year, you have to oh, re-authenticate. Oh, it didn't. It's not sliding. Don's going to do his trick here, but we're talking Jeez. about Windows authentication. And really, there we go. Perfect. Okay. And this is really the ability to not have to log in again to the web interface. And I'm oh, sorry, we're we're technically technical difficulties this morning, but um, they were back. Okay, we're having fun okay. This so anyway, yeah. So so basically, you would log into the machine. You log into the machine, and your credentials are automatically pushed to the web interface. Yeah. And automatically to yeah. the uh, it, when you're going through a, using the publish wizard in Workbench. Yeah. That's another one I hadn't even thought about. But yeah. basically, it'll publish those uh, credentials through. Okay. You don't have to enter your username or password anymore. Okay. Big thing for for large organizations. Right. Right. And then I want to talk about. Uh, Resources, which really came from two two use cases or two scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. We had our good friend uh, down in Australia who was publishing uh, workspace up to the cloud. Yeah, one of the early adopters of cloud. Yeah, and he had about a hundred megs of data that he needed to have in the cloud. Yes, no access to the file system. Right, how can he get that data up there? Ooh. that was one of the challenges. After twenty thirteen, he'd have to bring the f the workspace down and republish it each time, it, which took about five minutes to publish. So streaming was trouble. Yeah, the second thing about that. Was uh, if I did have access to the file system, was able to maybe use a UNC path. When I was running a workspace, I had to then paste that UNC path in rather right, than browser. Right, so right, what did right. we do to to solve that? Well, we yeah. enabled you to upload files and to map UNC paths as resource directories. Yeah. And I think you're going to show us a demo. I'm going to show you show us a couple of demos of this. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So I'm going to go here. And um, I'm going to go here, and here's my machine. Okay, so this is um, so I'm going to click on these this resources tab is what we're talking about now. Okay. And there's a number of them that we see. One is I have a I have a scheduled job that runs um, called backup configuration. It runs every morning. Yeah. And um, at about 2 a.m. And um, I can see all my backups on that machine too. So oh, I could okay. I could download them if I wanted to move them somewhere else, or I could use them. 
but they're just there. Also, there's a data directory, and um, you know, you know, if you want to do some automation, you can do stuff in there. And of course, the logs directory. Yes. You know, you can see all the logs because remember, with FME in the cloud, where you're not allowed to, you cannot log on to that machine yeah. because otherwise, it'd be a complete support nightmare. And there was so, and there was a, a government organization in, in the U.S. that locked the machine down so you couldn't get to anything on there. That's right. That's Nothing right. logs. That's hard to trust. That's right. So what I'm going to do is um, we're going to create a new folder here and then we're going to put data into it. Okay. So let's just call it I don't know parcels. Yeah, let's call, call it parcels. parcels. Okay, since it's going to be parcels data, I'm going to put in there. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to open it. Okay, I'm going to upload some files and. Okay, so let's see, demos, data sharing, I have a link to some parcel data. And I'm just going to drag and drop a whole bunch of parcels up there. Okay. okay. That's good enough. Mm -hmm. um, if I, ha I, I could also drag and drop a whole folder. Oh, okay. Uh, if I'm yeah. using Chrome. So Chrome supports Chrome that. supports that. The other ones Very don't support cool. that yet. Very but cool. anyway, so now I go to parcels. And I expand it, and you can see these actual. So we can imagine we've got data up there that doesn't change that often. That's right. We don't want to keep publishing That's right. That's it. Right. Or... And with our REST API, you know, it's very easy to move more data up there. So you Actually, could imagine. Yeah. You could imagine. Um, you can imagine that. So now, how do I use that in a workspace? Um, well. You know, here's a little workspace. It's not too interesting, but that's not what we're showing. And now, what I'm able to do is I'm able to browse the data. So there's the parcel. So, for example, I could pick one, okay. and um, and then I can specify where it goes. So we'll call this uh, parcels out just for fun. Parcel out, and I'm going to run the workspace, and it's going to use that one that I navigated to, and. Um, and um, right to so now if I ran that workspace now if I go to the resources, we're going to see under data we're going to see there was a parcels but there was a parcels out and there was the there was a shape right file. right yeah, yeah so so for SP one yeah. what we've done yeah. is we've actually made this browsing um, we've improved this browsing because of course work is never done never done and so now on the output as well you wouldn't have to enter in this. Thing you can just you just browse again. You could browse to your resources. The thing I'm really excited about this um, for on-premises. A lot of people have their data already in their network. Share. Yes, they want to map UNC. Yes. so you can map a UNC drive path to be one of these resource directories. Right. So, so, you, then so you'd have a new one. Then is what you're you'd saying. You'd have a new one showing yeah, up there. Yeah, that's awesome. And then you can browse it very yeah, easily yeah. using configure. No more manually pasting in UNC paths. Yeah, no that's a big like deal. That. That's a big deal. Yeah. That's a big deal. So we're pretty excited about that. So that's that one. Yeah. You know, again, often the things that make a big difference for users are not the big, huge things; they're yeah. the small things. But yes. this ability to decouple the data from the workspace exactly. and, is yeah. um, is a huge deal. Yeah. So, and, the, and this is one that. Um, People want to send an email when the schedule completes. Yeah. Well, who knew? But yeah. uh, what people were doing to get around this was to send to use Python in a shutdown. Yeah. When people oh, use Python, boy, what does boy. that make you do, Don? Yeah, that makes me cringe. It makes Don you know, cringe. Because really what that is is, um, I mean, I know Python and there are times yeah. to use it, but yeah. for common tasks, we don't want people to have to do that. No, absolutely. And, uh, and also then you have the post action of a workspace inside the workspace. Yeah. When really the post action should be uh, decoupled from the workspace. Decoupled from should, the workspace. It should finish off, and then the notification should yeah. happen without yeah. taking up. That's the right. That's right. So and, um, uh, so uh, and so that's that's the ability there. Yeah. And and basically it notifies a topic, and the topic then goes to an email. That's right. That's right. And scheduling is was the number one thing people asked for. It's still the number yeah. one thing people ask for enhancements to. Yes. Yeah. And scheduling really is. Automation. It is absolutely you know, automation. So you know you have a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be run on a re regular basis, um, and you want to automate it. So uh, yeah. So yeah. So you're excited about yeah. Uh, I'm going to show. Files I'm going to show a demo so here of, of a, blog uh, files. So is that where you want to go? Right, right there. That's it. That's okay. where I want to go. I'm okay. actually going to pop into. Look at that. I got lots of things going on here. FME server 14, and oh, what did I mean? I meant that. Yeah. There you go. And in here. Log myself in. Mm -hmm. 2014. In here, I've got a, a, a job I'm going to run or a workspace I'm going to run. Yeah. And uh, users told us, you know, we actually don't run jobs that are like one minute or, or 10 seconds. We actually run jobs that are long running. That's yeah. you see the clever name there. Yeah, it's right. Long running. That thing runs for days. It does. Maybe I, never ever finishes. We, yeah. I have one I'm going to demo earlier that later that never finishes. That is, yeah. that is a it's an interesting webinar concept. That's but. right. So this will keep going, and I'm going to come back an hour later. And how do I know what's going on with the job? Before you couldn't see the running, uh, the, the running jobs log file. Now right. I'm showing now you right now. It says running, right? Yeah. That's what we're yeah. looking at. Yeah. Come in here. Yeah. Click log. 
yeah. and you can actually see see it. the status. You can download yeah. a snapshot. So now, yeah, you can that's see great. What's going that's on. great. Yeah. yeah, because before you you know you might a job's running, you want to you want to check to see how it's progressing. Absolutely. And uh, there is no way to visually see yeah. inside. So yeah. so it's so a, that's a small a, thing, but a big thing. a small thing, but a big thing. Absolutely. So that's great. You know, and I actually did not appreciate how important that was. No. Until I was um, working on this one with WebSockets, and it was on the web, and I went, "So, is this actually working or not?" Yes. And then, and, and then I was like, "Oh, I can't log in." But then, wait a minute. Yeah, you can see the snapshot yeah, of that yeah. log file. Okay, we're good here, are we? We are sort of good. Um, it's showing the yeah, it switches. We're we're a bit of lag on the okay. PowerPoint, and apologize for so that. So it must be network um, issues somehow. Network issue. Maybe okay. it's because. Of so, so now we're going to talk about. Um, oh yes, this uh, yeah. this uh, our users are very excited about workflow management. So can't see, see it. Don's yeah. going to do his magic. There we uh, go. Okay, it's just slow. It's just, just a little slow. Mm, interesting. Okay, yes. I wonder if it's the video stream we're doing this time. We've never done that before. It's possible. Maybe we should turn that off. Anyway, maybe. Well, okay. We'll think about okay. So anyway, what's this about? So basically, you've got people have got one workspace that will do one thing, and then another one needs to run after that. Another yeah. one needs to run after that. That yeah. has to be success before they move on. Yeah, How right. can we make a, an overall uh, controller for that? Well, you can use these FME server job submitters to yeah. submit. Yeah. But one of the problems with that was it took an extra FME engine license. Right. Right. So if you only had one engine, yeah, what would happen? It would um, it would submit the job yeah. and then you would you want to wait for it to finish. Yeah. It would put it in the job queue. Yeah. Of course, the, the job queue would just wait until the engine was freed, but the engine couldn't be freed because it was running the chicken job. Chicken and the egg. It was a chicken and egg was a deadlock. A deadlock. And so you know, users could we could say, well, get another engine, but there's that just feels bad in the in the gut to tell users to get another engine yeah. like that. But also then still, if they then two of those jobs happen to run at the same time, then they could have deadlock as well. So we fixed that. So now you can. Uh, and I'm gonna. And that, now you can do that. I'm going to actually jump in and, and look at a workspace. Okay. Good. Yeah. And of course, uh, we are waiting for the slides okay. to catch up. There we go. So and I'm going to come back out here. Uh, help me out with the uh, where that is. Oh, with its favorites. You helped me out earlier. Yeah. So scroll to the top of this guy there. There it is, there right? Go. Deep dive into FMU okay. Server 2014 demos. And we got the one called Workflow Management. And I'm going to open up the controller workspace. So I'm going to actually just talk about. There's three workspaces in in this this demo here. Yep. Yep. And it is opening up. We're not doing too bad. In here, we've got a workflow. Uh, what does it do? Well, we've got three separate workspaces. We want to run them one after another, but only if there's success. So if there's success, then we want to run it. Uh, it's very easy to do now. We just build up this workspace. I call it a controller workspace. You kick it off with a creator. In here, you come, and this one, what it does is it loads data into a spatial light database. The yep. next, this one then takes that data, uh, merges it with some other data. Mm -hmm. It's a different process. That's how it's architected. And then the last one will actually take that data and build, build some web map tiles. Right. So what this really enables us to do is to use workspaces themselves as building blocks in for other workflows. Exactly. Yeah. And if we come in here, there's one other thing I'll point out. Uh, you'll see that there is something called output data sets. So mm -hmm. we've actually, uh, instead of putting the data where the workspace it says, we've told it to go to a special location mm -hmm. so that in the subsequent workspace here, you can just use it. if I come through, I can go next, and I can see that we use that data from the previous workspace yeah. right in here. Yeah. And so it makes it easy to chain these all together. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, yeah, so one good use yeah. of this, imagine you have a workflow that right now is all in one workspace, takes yeah. five days to run, but there's clear parts within that that logical. are logical units. Now you yes. can break that into several workspaces and then if you had and then if you had a problem, yes. you wouldn't have to go back and run the whole thing. You could then see, ah, yeah. the first three steps were successful. It was a fourth step that failed. So I'm gonna rerun the fourth and fifth step to Absolutely. solve that problem. And we see a lot of a lot of people implementing that exact logic. Yeah. Uh, and how how they do it? They use Python. Yeah. Again, yeah. Ooh, Python yeah. and a shutdown script. Yeah. Scary. At the end, the nice thing about the controller is at the end you can then do m many things. You can copy the files to a, a directory. You can yeah. put them into S3. Yeah. So that S3 them. uploader, that's new, isn't it? That is new. Actually, yeah. that's the ability yeah. to push data to Amazon. Yeah. S3 so service. yeah, we also have an FTP um, thing too. So once that's a workspace is yeah. yeah. So now when a workspace is finished. You can, the data can be copied to an, an arbitrary FTP site Absolutely. or copied to S3 buckets. So that's yeah. very, very powerful. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, I mean, you can upload it to a web service. You can yeah. uh, send right. an email. You yeah. can tweet about it. And yeah. of course, we hate to say anything about Python, uh, but no, no, we don't hate it. No, no, no. But but uh, it's it's there for you know some wild and wacky things or whatever you want to exactly. do. But for the common stuff, we're trying to make it easy. That's it. Yeah. 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 So that's just like soon we'll have a JavaScript caller. Really? Yeah. To call JavaScript. So you can embed JavaScript right within your workspace. The uh, first thing I'm going to do is is alert. That's the first thing I oh, like okay. to, to okay. do alert. But okay. that's uh, that's that was okay. workflow management. Big big feature for yeah for uh, for our customers. Yeah. We're going to jump into what are we talking next? Some new parameters. That yeah. Are yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about. I want to talk about the job ID one. Okay. So first, I'm going to talk about that. The job ID basically people wanted to log additional messages. Yeah. For that 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 run, yeah. How how could they do that before? They didn't know the job ID when they yeah. were in the workspace. Yeah. Now they know that job yeah. ID. They can log out to yeah. a database. Yeah. Another interesting thing about yeah. the log files and job ID. Yeah. Now we've made the logs file directory so you can see it. Mm. And the job ID is actually part of the log file oh, name. Okay. So so it's even as you're browsing those, anymore. you can you can you can easily figure out which goes with which. Okay. Whereas before it was some arbitrary was, grid we generated and had, and it yes. wasn't human readable or human useful. No. And so it just makes things much easier. And the other thing we're excited about is the FME server request URI. Oh yeah. Because that's the entire um, URL string that's put in the browser or as part of the call. The parameters, the arguments. Because everything. often, you know, what this enables us to do, yeah, here's two examples here. It's like um your Janeo, did I say that right? You did actually. Okay, the augmented reality. Which uh, at the beginning of the there string before slash up. pois was dot fmw right? That's it. And um, and then well the rest of that would have been thrown away. Yes. You would have still got the parameters like the, the you you know uid, UID and, and um, lat long, lat long and request. point and whatever meters, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. But you lose that other part after the dot fmw. Which is the standard for Janeo. Yeah. 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 And sometimes people, web services, they encode other stuff in those, you know. Yeah. So now that whole URI goes to the workspace. So now we yeah. can um, we can fake out anything. So one of the things that we've used FME Server for is to build a WFS. And um, well, we had a, and we had a WFS before, but the problem I, I, we encountered is it's built into a, a kind of built with code. Yes. At, yes. at an app as an application yeah. or a service. So if you want yeah. to modify it, yeah. make a slight tweak to it. Yeah. It's beyond the FME user's ability. You have yeah, to write that's code. right. That's right. So, um, so because if you think about what a web service is, it's really just a URL with some yeah. data. Um, something's run on it, and then the response is sent back. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. 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 So uh, and that did come up. We're still having. Oh, it the, did. Eh? It's just slow. I think it's. I think it's the screen. I, I think it's actually the webcam. Is it? Let's turn that off. I'm going to turn see. off the webcam. Sorry about this. We're so we're just going to say bye for yeah, a second. Yeah. Here. We'll come back at the end. Stop sharing webcam, and we'll see if that improves the performance. Let's see what happens. Here. Okay. So um, yeah. So 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 now with FME Server, rather than have dedicated services for WFS, WMTS, yeah. all these things, we're building them in uh, workspaces. Yeah, because and, there's a million services, uh, and I'm going to come up with about 10 more. And, exactly. And, and exactly. let's just use a and workspace. now we can do them all yeah. right flexible. within the workspace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, look at that. This is a cool one, yeah. That was the difference. Okay, so Directory Watcher, so um, or Directory Watch is the service. Basically what this yeah. does, this is all about Automation. Automation, absolutely. absolutely. So um, the scheduler, you know, runs whenever the time happens to come. This one will run, will trigger a job whenever particular action happens, i.e. a file shows up in one of our, in a directory. In a directory, yeah. So it could be a resource directory. It absolutely could be. We're going to deep dive into this. Okay. Deeping, deeping, deep diving. Yeah. Oh, that's a... Uh, want to go to... Oh, no, you have to hit the option. We'll go back to... I think, I think I'm in here. Oh, are you there? Yep. Oh, you're there. Okay. There we go. Directory Watcher, and I'm actually gonna open up a couple things here. Oh, look at that. Okay, I want to go to Gmail, so that's. Go to go desktop. Ooh, I actually want to go to Gmail. I'm gonna show a few things. Okay. Gmail.com, and I'm gonna switch. There we go. I'm glad that it's not logged in. Mm -hmm. So now you're. This is a demo of how to log in to uh, Gmail. That's how you log into Gmail. Okay. I'm going to skip whatever that is, and now I've got that set up, and I want to go to our web interface, BP Server 14. Okay. What am I doing here? I am going to place some files into one of these new resource directories. Okay. And I want that immediately to be converted. 
what what's the file I'm putting in there? I'm putting in a DWG file. Okay. And I want that be to be converted to a shape file. You did that earlier, remember? Yeah. Well, I want to do that, but I don't want to have to go and configure. Oh, it so you're going to take take it to the next level? Yeah, I saw. Because I had to go. There. Yeah, because I copied them over, and then it went and ran manually. And so you're going to do that automatically. That's it. That's it. I'm going to take here. We got DWG. I'm just going to drop that in there. Yeah. And. and and now it's going through. It's running a job because we've okay. got uh, something monitoring it. And if right. I come over here, right. so just go to the um, the notification. You want me to show that? Yeah, yeah okay. I think that's worth. Might uh, as well. Yeah, we have a second. It's not hard to show. It's not hard no, to, to, exactly. to do. So actually, now there's a convert directory. tool there. Yeah. Directory watch, and you yeah. just come along here. Here's and the you, resource directory. You pick the directory you want to watch. Pick the one I was interested and in. And then it publishes to a topic, which will, have, which will trigger tool. a workspace. Exactly, it triggers a workspace. Now I see I've got a new email here. K24, if I come in here, it says I can get the file. What is this linked to? It's to the REST API oh, to okay. get the file or the resource directory. And there it is, and I can open it up. Very sweet. And I can see that's a shape file. So what did I do? I dropped a file in there, and I got an email with, with the result. Automation. Yeah. Automation. I want to show you another way of doing it, too. So say I so have So if access. I look at that resource directory, I would see the output there? You absolutely would. Wow. So if I, oh, I, let's do that. There's uh, so much we can do. And I want to do that for sure. Firefox, let's come across to here. Resource directory. Output. Output. Convert tool. Convert tool. There's the output there. There's the zip file. And we got to that through the REST API. Wow. That's what that link. Which through we're the REST API. Yeah, that. We're going to talk about that more. Now, what if I have access to the server? That's a cool thing. Uh, I can drop a file right in here. So rather than sure. use the web interface. Sure. So if you had a UNC path, for example, that's you would like the users wouldn't even know yeah. that there was a server behind there. They would just drag and drop things into the UNC path or yeah. which would appear on their Windows machine. And then a few minutes later they would go to the output and um, and, and there it would be. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Boom, there it is, K twenty eight. So yeah. Uh, without really doing much, I've got a shapefile version of that DWG file That's just right. by dragging That's it, right. dropping, it right. dropping it in there. So, you know, great for a number of things. Conversion, obviously. Um, QA. QA you know, would you be have big. People building files, you want to run a QA, maybe making sure they're following the CAD standard of your organization or something yeah. like that. You could have a workspace. As they finish, they just drag it into this directory, yeah. and then they could get the, you know, get an OK or not and get an email telling them what's wrong. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless, really. Really is. And and I, it, it's interesting. This it uses that new ability. If I can zoom this in a bit, I'll use the new. Uh, first, we take in the, the file. We figure out how to process it yeah. or what file we want to process. Yeah. But then we run a sub job. Yeah. Guess what Guess which job we're running? We're using the yeah. easy translator. I see. Yeah. So we're yeah. saying, you know what? We've already got a workspace that will translate this data yeah. to shape. Yeah. So we'll just use it. That's right. And That's the right. fact that we we're not taking an engine here. That's right. Means yeah, it's and after me, twenty thirteen, this wouldn't have been possible without no. it without some engines. But then, even yeah. if a whole bunch of people are doing it, it would just yeah, it would just get ugly pretty quick. It's pretty ugly. We take the result of that, we copy it out, and then we send the email off. Yeah. Uh, to to the users. So that's Very nice. Very uh, nice. some uh, a lot of different functionality there that we've added for, for yeah, 2014. Yeah, yeah. Automation. Yeah. So yeah, look at how much faster it is now that we've turned the web. Look at that. Off. It's almost in real time, Don. Yeah. Boy. Speaking okay. Of well, time, that's what happens when you try things. Sometimes you learn things. We we learn. I, yeah. You know, I keep looking at the camera like they're looking at me now. Now I know. I, now I, I know. Can, so what's this about? Okay. Now, yeah, w this is often when we're building workflows. Um, in the past, you would be using topics, and you would have an application or yeah. your web interface post to a topic. And and you know when you're developing, things rarely work the first That's time, it. almost yeah. never. Never. I yeah. would say never, but you can never say never. Never say never. That's and right. um, but then the question is, okay, now did did it actually the topic actually get sent? What got sent to the topic? There's just a whole bunch of things. So now what we have is this ability to monitor topics in real time. So as you post yeah. things, you can actually see what's being sent to a topic. Yeah, and I'm going to show that later, and it really does help. Uh, that last example, I used it uh, throughout that yeah, while developing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, you know, this is one area again that uh, people, um, when you did your survey, yeah. you know, this whole ability to see things as they're happening in server yes. is a bigger thing. So this is, um, you know, iteration 1.0 or 1.x. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you can only imagine this is going to get better and better. With better time. and better. Yeah. 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 So. Oh boy, HTML5. Oh. This is a big deal. This is um, with that for me. Server 2014. We now ship a WebSocket server as part of um, you know as part of FME 2014. So and what and what do the, what do WebSockets enable really? 
it's really a high speed communication uh, mechanism. So you can think of it for, for the technical people out there. You can think of it like TCP IP sockets, okay. um, but, but for the web. So you can now have browsers communicate um, with servers. Um, the, whole, the whole idea is to get um, web applications to have the performance of desktop applications. Yeah. You know, so every time you make a web call, you're talking about uh, about 100 milliseconds, right? By yeah. the time you know it goes to the server, it brings it back. Um, that that round trip is about 100 milliseconds, or a tenth of a second, and yeah. that's really really slow. Yeah. With web sockets, you make the connection once, and now you're talking really high speed. It's just now limited to how how yeah. fast is your communication mechanism. Uh, applications like uh, Gmail, Facebook are using the precursor to this technology. Which this is like a, yeah, it's like yeah. long polling with the yeah, with the which we've added to SP1 for our tweet. Streamer. Oh, I see. Yeah, so now you can listen, open up this t the tweet. Oh, long polling like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Still a useful technology. But it let's, is. Let's... Yeah, so there's just some of the uses. So we're going to show one here. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. And okay, so now let's see. I already have, you know. So we're going to show an example here. Yeah, so what I have, I'll show the example first, then I'll walk through. That's probably the easiest. Yeah, let's so do what that. I have is I have a. Uh, not that one, so we're finished with that one. Not that one, not that one, not that one. I think it's in Google Chrome, maybe. Yeah. Is it? No, I think it's over here. Fire there it is. There. Okay, yeah. That's like having a whole bunch of things. So basically what I've done, you know, it's a toy example, but it, but it gives you the idea. Again, I have a workspace that never ends. It's opened up a web socket. It's waiting for somebody else to connect to it. Okay. And what this application does is as I click, the click goes to the FME server engine running the web socket and then sends the, and then the web, the workspace buffers it and sends it back. And you can see as I click, the it, it, it's instantaneous, you know. Oh, it's, you're kidding me. It's not running. Maybe we need to, yeah, let's try that. There, there we go. go. Okay, the browser, yeah, broke Timed the web out. connection. Yeah, anyway, okay, so here you go. So that's what happens if you leave a browser running for a few hours. Okay, so here you go. So you can see the performance there. It's just instantaneous. It, it looks, and it, yeah. yeah. And this server is not running locally on this machine. This server is running in the cloud. Um, my browser, of course, is running locally, and the points are going there, the buffer is coming back. So that, now let's take a look at, uh, at what the code looks like. Just very very quickly. So here is this whole um, web socket application. You can see here's where it connects to the web socket. You know, there's the name of my machine that's in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, of course, on open, um, we have this notion of stream ID so that the web socket server can handle a whole bunches of different people. Oh, okay. You can have public and private. I made this one pub um, public, okay. so there was no authentication. Obviously, you can make them so they authenticate, so that not anybody can just send stuff to right. it. And then all what happens is when you click on the map, so on a map click, um, a JSON string containing the latitude and longitude is sent to the server, okay? And then the server gets it. Okay, I'll open that one up, go over here. Okay, then the server is going to get it. And what the server does, a very, very simple, um, very, very simple workspace that simply buffers it. The web, the workspace is, is relatively trivial and the JavaScript yeah, to do yeah, this. Yeah. Honestly, and of course we're working surprising. more and more to even hide um, even hide uh, the JavaScript. So here's essentially where you know you have a creator to start the whole thing and then basically the workspace says okay I'm going to establish again there's a buffer ID st stream ID of buffer. Yeah. I'm going to open and I'm just going to wait for somebody to connect to it and send me data. When data comes in um, the JSON is well defined by this workspace. It simply grabs the point data, buffers it, yeah. and then sends it back through to the server, and then it sends it out there. And yeah. each point just comes in, and the workspace just continually runs. And that's um, and that's um, essentially how it works. Now, what we've done is we recognize there's a number of ways you can configure these web sockets. I've done the high speed streaming mode, yeah. you know, because if you have a lot of data. Now, the high speed streaming mode for this application, you could argue. Um, is probably not needed. Yeah. Um, but of course, if I didn't, I'm going to see about a tenth of a second delay, which might or might That's not a, be um, applicable. A, a killer depends. Yeah. 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 So, so in this case, it's really high speed. But I could also uh, tie it up with um, um, topics, and so then every request goes to a topic, which then triggers a workspace yeah. that connects to the WebSocket server, grabs it, and does its thing. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, the, 
you might not want to take up the engine every time. That exactly. You request, exactly. Or you might need that high speed functionality either way. That's right. That's right. Because you can see if I go to my workspace here, if I go to my um, my F me engine job yeah. running, you'll see there's one always running, and it's been running for since um. January twenty fourth. It, okay. it just keeps running. It, so, wow, yeah, that's yeah, pretty reliable. Yeah. So there you go. So that's web sockets. So we did this. This we is the workspace, the and all this will be, yeah. Amazon Web Services. Yeah, tell us. Yeah, about we've that, done though. a lot of work. We continue to do more work with Amazon Web Services. Um, S three, of course, we have an S three uploader downloader. We also have an S three um, notification, so you can push stuff to S three at the end, which you showed there. Yeah. Um, and SQS, both we can both put things onto a simple queue service or pull things. Yeah. And that's useful for if you're building a flow on the web. Typically, you can have many to chain things together using Amazon. So we continue yeah. to. Uh, Work to make FME Server plug into everything. Yeah, I'm really excited about the S3 and and, and maybe adding Dropbox and Box yeah, and, and things yeah, like that, just to yeah. make cloud storage very easy. Yeah, absolutely, use it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So now there's a new REST API. So Aaron's going to uh, talk a bit about that. I'm going to show a very quick demo of the REST API here. Uh, it's 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 just a, a complete rewrite uh, and and much much improved, to be quite honest. Here we go. And one of the things I really like about it. Is it already open? Well, wow. okay, that's okay. That's okay. Over there, in I come into here. You can try everything. Yeah. Uh, you can try everything in here without having to copy code out or anything. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to run a. I'm going to send a notification using the API here. Okay. And how do I do that? I just click that. It yeah. fills it out with an example already. It's going to the sample topic. Yeah. At the same time, at the same time, I want to monitor the topic, so I'm going to show that real time. Topic monitoring. Okay. There we are. So I'm gonna pull this. Yeah. I'm gonna pull this over here. Yeah. Go to monitoring. Yeah. If I'm lucky, it'll be already set up to do sample topic. Oh, it's on convert tool, which was the, which previous. was the the previous example exactly. So sample topic. Now I'm monitoring that. Convert tool. You're gonna leave both. I'm gonna leave it on. You okay. do as many as you want. Sure. Sample topic. This is the what I'm sending. Yeah. And how do I try it? I just come down here. Click this right button. Here. Oh, I got to log in. Of course. Of course, yeah. you need a token. Yeah. I'm going to give myself 10 days access. I'm going to be generous. You like generating those tokens. I, you know, you like to look them up. I, There's a I new do. functionality I there. I know, which is um, interesting, eh? Before, that was tough, too. Absolutely. <laughs> Try it out, yeah. and there it is. Look the at quick that. brown fox. Wow. So, that just saves so much time in development. You know what you have to do before? You have to look at the log files and things. Yeah. It was real pain. Yeah. So a couple things there. The REST API, you can try everything I've gone through. We've gone through. We've tested. We've tried every one of these things. Uh, yeah. You just go here. You, you click try it. Yeah. And that's yeah. how you look. And this was really, this flows nicely into our next topic. Absolutely. Which is, um, of course, because um, I use the, um, and this is all about web integration. Yeah. And in particular, you know, with the new REST API, that's really what it's about, making it easy for us to plug into and users yeah. create um, connections to other things. So, you know, we talk about Amazon, look at all the things, DynamoDB, RDS, Redshift, S3, and as well as Google BigQuery. All oh, right. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, Zapier. And again, yeah. this is a this is a, a service that enables us to connect to uh, to things. So what we have here, whoops, is um, the ability to um, connect. So whoa. Yeah, well, while you set that up, I'll talk a bit. I mean, basically, you've got hundreds of these web services coming online all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, how do you connect them to each other? Well, we could we could invent the wheel here, reinvent the wheel. But yeah. there are services online. Such as Zapier that Zapier. will connect these hundreds That's right. of, That's right. of services to each other. Yeah. So this is the front page of Zapier. We're going to log in here, and um, and you'll see that. Um, okay, we're going to log in here. And what I did is I created one for um, FME server. Yeah. And um, if we look at my dashboard, we're going to see that I've created a number of them. I've created. Okay, come on. Dashboard. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really care about the new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. It's really wanting to show me that, but it won't. Don't you love it when third-party apps? Okay. Let's go here. I don't really care about that. There we okay. go. So sales. So I created one that um, Ooh, a new like... app from Salesforce to a draft email of Salesforce to lead mapping. So essentially, what you do now is um, we'll walk through quickly on. Okay, so you would just simply pick a, a service. So we could say like Salesforce. Okay, 
and we would say, you know, now it's going to say you just pick a new trigger. Like, what do you want to trigger the uh, the operation? So, for example, a new lead. Right. And now what we have over here is FME server. Okay. okay. So again, choose an action. This one we could say trigger a workspace. So now you've added FME server as an option. Into That's this. right. So now what's going to happen is every time there's a new lead in Salesforce or any of the 260 applications, we can trigger something in FME server. So um, I already have a Salesforce account configured, so I don't have to do that again. FME server, is that the one? Yeah, that's still, that's still the same one. And then you can add custom filters if you want, we won't. And then, of course, what workspace do you want to trigger? Well, you know, you can specify um, different works. So you specify the repository. Then you, if you pick a workspace, well, let's pick one with no parameters first. You can see it looks, again, using no, the REST no API. Oh, okay. oh, let's pick one with parameters. Oh, now it uses the REST API to ask that workspace, and you can see there's... there's Those are parameters yeah, for the workspace. And it, that's right. So you can hard code them like that, or you could pick a field from Salesforce, and now it's using the Salesforce API to go there. And basically, it's loading, loading, loading. This is Salesforce and Zapier. It's not us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Still hanging on. Hang and, uh, and then basically what you can do is pick a field from Salesforce to be another parameter. Of course, okay. also what we do is... Um, we grab the entire JSON body from all these different things. So even right. if this, Salesforce yeah, or that's Box. right, that's right. Or whatever what, it is. what all these are. So then they're all available. So everything that comes from those systems is available in um, in uh, FME. So that's um, there. And then of course you can test it, whatever, um, and that sort of thing. And that's um, that's what you do there. So let's have a look at uh, what we did with. Uh, with the with the Salesforce ones. So what we did is we mapped them into two different systems. Okay, we uh, mapped them into. If I go here, we mapped them into ArcGIS Online. So if I go here, demos and Zapier. So here's what it looks like in um, ArcGIS Online. Okay, I won't show you the workspace. It's trivial. So those are all the leads. Okay. You know, over a period of time, not very long, that came in. Anytime there's a new lead, shows up on the. That's map. right. And the other one is um, assuming it's still here is Google Maps Engine right here. So again, you know, here they are in Google Maps Engine. So as things come in, you can, uh, you know, zoom in and out wow. and see, see the leads. So if I'm at so, a utilities company yeah. and maybe I have new uh, yeah. requests for service or something, they sh that's show right. up on That's there. right. And the other thing I did was create draft emails. So if they're in North America, which is safes um, where we directly contact people, yeah. I have it create a, another zap, create a, if I go to my dashboard here, You'll see there's another zap that um, configures. It really wants me to look at that. That does a Salesforce draft email, and you can see 17 minutes ago they both triggered. And so that okay. is now we're back to our show, and that's just a quick. If you want to try it, there's a link here, and you can you can get invited so you can use FME server is yourself. A, is there an article? Yeah, and we have a blog article that's going out this morning. So you click on the thing in the blog article or here, and now you'll be able to. Uh, to try that yourself. So we encourage you to try that. Um, there we go. Oh, what new features? We do have that. Um, we do have a poll. A poll, what new features? We're going to launch this. One thing I'll say about that last one was uh, we have a, a customer that's using uh, that that's using that for box.com. Yeah. Basically, there's a new file. They want to be alerted about it. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. they send that down after you serve. But what are these new features all about here? Oh, well, easy backup migration and upgrade. Um, you know, that's something we put a lot of effort in. We think it's important. Yeah. How do you, what are, you, are you excited about that? Be able the ability to move your configurations. HTML5 WebSocket support. How cool and excited are you about that? The new and improved REST API. Yeah. Um, yeah, wow. Workflow management, job chaining. And expanded support for all web services, and of course you can pick uh, you can pick here. multiples here. So this is a uh, wow! I, I might end up picking them all here. I'm pretty excited about them. So anyways, I, yeah, absolutely, if, yeah. if I had to, I'd pick them all as well. So let's go close poll here let's and share the results. Share it, and you can see wow! Work ma workflow management job chaining. Big one. Yeah, a big three, one. Three quarters of the people here are excited yeah, about that. That's right. That's, that's right. So one. that's a huge one. That's yeah, a huge yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, good stuff. We're gonna keep going. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, so also coming in 2014 SP1, we won't show it, but um, yep. the ability to use any email that system that supports IMAP as your um, your email publisher. So now yep. you could set up something in Gmail, and then FME Server would go in and grab the email from that, rather than again 
punching a hole through your firewall. It was a big so, rotation. Yeah, yeah. So we're pretty excited about that. So this will probably be the recommended approach, I would imagine. I, I think yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So that's coming in SP1, which is in the March time frame. Very cool. Okay. So how do you try it? Well, there's there's two options. And you know what? I was looking last night, and it's uh, 10 minutes to do the Express install, and yeah. it's 10 minutes to launch FME Cloud. So there you go. So, so you download okay. it. Yeah, whatever you want. We're here to help in both cases. And... Uh, and give it a try. And on an FME Cloud, we give you $250 credit yeah. so that you can, uh, again, give yeah. it a shot without any expense. And on-premise, 60 days. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, there you go. And um, there's free training, and we'll help you. What types of applications are you most excited about? So another poll here. And it, we're, I think we're right on time. This is quite well, this we, is awesome. We want to save a bit of time for QA. That's right. So we're going to zip through those last questions and on okay. the QA. Awesome. But, uh, here we're really asking about kind of what what areas are you interested in? Well, how do you want to apply FME Server, FME yeah. Cloud, FME yeah. Technology? Yeah. yeah, and so well, you can uh, probably guess which one I'm excited about, can you? If I had to pick one. Well, there's there's two. I would say, that the, I'd say out, the top eh? one would be would be a big one for yeah, you. Yeah, but the third one too. Real time synchronization. Yeah, both those two are exciting. Yeah, They're absolutely. Very exciting. Okay. Let's close that poll. Share the sure. results. Oh, web automation. Yeah, we're huh? we're really excited. And the blog yeah. article talks about. The title is automation for the enterprise. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. And 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 we realize that's what our customers uh, love about FME servers: the ability to automate things. Yeah. So they don't yeah. have to push buttons. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Let's keep. So going. close that poll. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we're back. Okay. So there we go. Look at that. We got. Uh, it's almost like we knew what the answer to that poll was going to be: automation, and that was the number one response. No, that wasn't planned, but and yeah. that real time data is the second one, and that was the second best response. Wow. I know. So we've tied that pretty closely. We did. We did. Yeah. It's like yeah. We, okay. Yeah. The, these four webinars, these are technical dive-in webinars. So we're going to be looking at how to configure things yeah. and getting yeah. really, really yeah. deep. We won't be having snorkels. We'll have a full. Yeah. Like that because guy. this again, we had Scooping the snorkel, so we were, you know, this crazy. Kind of, we're, we're much lower than we were before, but hey, you can go much deeper. Exactly, and we will. Uh, other webinars coming up. We got BIM and GIS coming yeah. up uh, in yeah. February. Yeah. And, and I and if you're interested at all in buildings. Um, you know, architectural, Revit, City GML, IFC, all those great things, you want to turn into that one. Because one of the That's big the things for FME 2014 is our great support for Revit. So we're really yeah. excited about that. And then, of course, um, you know, data integration and location intelligence, we're going to talk about that. Because yeah. even if you think about the world of Zapier, what FME Server brings to that world is location and intelligence. Absolutely. Yeah. And we always do the world tour. So yeah. that's coming up. It does start in April. Poof, I was right. It goes and it continues because I'm, you know, I'm going to Brazil, for example, yeah. and there's Australia. Yeah. There's a, lots of events, and and first time in five years, yeah, international user conference, 2014, and yeah. that is a picture of the building. It is. It's a beautiful, wow. state of the art Vancouver Convention Center, right on the water, right beside Stanley Park, yeah, um, it's world class. It's an LE, It's one of those lead buildings, green roof, grassy roof. Yeah, grass on the roof. Even. It's awesome. Excellent. Okay, and um, yeah, free to, free to, fun to learn. Our training, we're not a training company at SAFE. We are and we aren't. When I say we're not, we don't charge for our training. But it is hands-on, it is instructor-led, yeah. and um, so it's not online course where you're talking to a machine or you're filming out. There's actually people there to help you. That's it. We set up the machines for you, so you log on to an Amazon machine, so you in no way are putting any of your corporate infrastructure at risk. Yep. And uh, and uh, so please one sign up. Come once, come often. Yeah, one coming up on February 18th. FME Desktop, and that's where it all starts. Doesn't matter what you're using, that's where it all starts. That's, that's the beginning. And our community. Our community's um, just been overhauled again. We continue to look for ways to improve that. And um, so FMEPD is the gateway to, uh, to everything. So our community, there's a link there for that. The knowledge base, um, our FME channel, again, there's a link there for that. And of course, follow the blog. Yeah, at safe and that's just been revamped in the last. That's few, just been revamped few as, well. as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, those links. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Well, let's keep going. Yeah. Okay. And so this is it. Now we're using. Um, this is the new look for the community. So very good. Yeah. yeah. And there's a movie here. You want to get to know FME 2014 in four and a half or six minutes or something like that. Then um, it's uh, it's it's good fun. Yeah. Check it out. It's yeah. Fun one. And there's a FME 2014 expedition contest. So and, I, I, and, I, and I thought, are we giving away Lamborghinis? I'm not those are those new uh, um, Anki Drive cars that you control with your iPhones or iPads. Oh, okay. They're awesome. Okay. Yeah, that was what Santa got me for Christmas. Oh, really? Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, like, it's like track racing with no track. Oh, really? Yeah, you just steer them, and but they stay on the track. It's, it's awesome. 
Fantastic. So we're not giving away Lamborghinis, but it's a cool thing. That's right. That's right. Check yeah. that out. Yeah, that's right. If they're giving Lamborghinis, I bet you say safe staffer with me. Well, okay. I, so now it's time for Q and A. Look at that. We were told give five minutes for Q and A, and we give exactly five minutes. So, so probably for this one, we want to turn on the webcam. We're gonna get uh, we're gonna get Laura and, and Stuart in the back to pop their webcams open, and we're gonna pop ours open too. And we should be able to see. Yeah, There's there us. we are. There we are. And let's okay, see. Let's look at some. There's Stuart. Stuart. Look and at that great hair. That's that's funny. <laughs> And there's Laura. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. Laura, throw us, throw at us a, a question, and we'll try and answer it. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of questions throughout the webinar, so it's hard to pick just one. But yeah. um, I guess there was one question on backwards compatibility. So yeah. if you've got workspaces from 2013 and older, how are those going to work on 2014? Yeah, that's a great question. At Safe, we worked really hard to ensure that anything you had running in 2013 um, works in 2014. Yeah. If you have workspaces in 2013 that don't work in 2014, please let us know what they are, yeah. um, and we will um, work to make 2014 SP1 and those backward compatible so they do work. Because we recognize it is enterprise software. A lot of people have workflows running, and we want to make it easy to, um, to, to keep to working. Keep so, yeah. so what if I was using the old REST API? I know if there's a new oh, one. What good if I was using the old one? The old REST API, it, when you went logged on that page, yeah. if you went, you could actually, it's still there. So it's not going to go away. It's deprecated. We're never going to talk about it, but it's still there. So all your old things um, continue to work. Um, and then we're, yeah. yeah. Again, about backwards compatibility. Yeah. Stuart, hit us with another question. Yeah, we had a, um, there was quite a few questions about does Zapier, does the REST API, does X, does Y, only work with FME server or does it work in the cloud as well? Yeah, that's a great point. And, and I, I tried to be to say a couple times, but FME cloud is FME server in the cloud. So so Zapier will work with FME server, it'll work with FME or it'll on premise or it'll work with FME cloud. The one I was running is FME server in the cloud because of course in or, in order for Zapier to hit your FME server, it has to be addressable via the internet. So if you have it inside on-premise, locked down so the outside world cannot see it, then you will not be able to connect it to, um, to Zapier. Yeah. But if it's in the cloud, of course, then, then you can make it. We didn't even talk about in the cloud how you can control the security, but you can actually nail down the IP addresses that are able to hit FME server as well. So, mm -hmm. And in, my, in the blog article, I talk about how you can use FME server on premise as a gateway to connect web applications to um, on premise applications. So there's yes. a lot of flexibility there. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so short answer is FME cloud is FME server in the cloud. Absolutely. So everything I never knew that. That's great. Okay. <laughs> News to Stuart. Stuart, yeah, and he's the uh, technical, technical director, director of FME cloud. That's right. So <laughs> I think he's pulling our leg there. Yeah. <laughs> Laura, hit us with another question. Uh, okay, I'm just looking at some of the recent ones that have come in. Uh, let's see. Someone asking about when SP one's coming out. Got a keener? Coming out in the middle of March. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stuart, you got one there for us? Yeah, sure. Someone was asking, uh, can they use the FME workspace runner to do job chaining? Does it take the license in the same way as the job submitter? The workspace runner. If you're running it on the same machine, I believe you're allowed. It would work because you're on a single machine. You can have, I think, it's four or five workspaces running simultaneously. Are 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 sorry, we talk. But but, but, but not FME server, server workspace. On runner. FME server, no. On FME server, yeah. you'd use the FME server job submitter. Specifically, yeah. asking yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. You the the, yeah. the main thing and the main point is use the FME server job submitter. Uh, that's the one that has the new. Uh, ability to not use the license. Yeah. That's the one we're going to be That's pushing. Right. That's forward. right. If you ran an FME server or an FME workspace runner, just a plain one, yeah. it would then try to check out a desktop type license. Yes, and, and that, that would, probably would not work. Unless your floating license server had yeah. both. But, but, but the, uh, me the message is use the yeah, FME server. Job That's server. right. Because even now with one engine, you never have to worry about this running out of license issue. Yeah. That was a, that was a bug, really. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. Laura, you got another one for us? Uh, last one. Last one. <laughs> Gonna make it a good one. Um, yeah. Make it a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a couple questions about changes to scheduling for 2014. I don't remember if that was covered in the webinar. There was the, the big one was the ability to post to topics on success or failure. Yeah. 
Yeah. Was there anything else that comes that, to mind? That, that's the biggest one. Um, okay. we, we have some plans for, for Absolutely. the next release. Absolutely. We're going to make the interface a little nicer and, yeah. and make it just a smoother yeah. process for creating schedules. It's yeah. very important yeah. to users. Yeah. 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 And again, if, if users have any you know any ideas or any thoughts on on what they what what it's what's missing there, then please do let us know because we recognize that that audit, FME server is automation and scheduling is a huge piece of that. Yeah. So whatever we can do to uh, to make that better, we would really like to hear about that. So okay, that's the end of the Q and A. Yeah, and uh, I think we're gonna finish it off. Yeah, so we should turn on off our. Uh, we'll kill the web webcams. Thanks now. a lot, guys. Thanks. Good seeing you. Thanks. Okay.